Now you know that what is PHP and how to use it. If you are still not familiar with PHP, then don't worry, I will explain each and every code while creating a WordPress theme. But for now, the time is to learn how to install WordPress in your local system. So let's see how to install it. So to download the WordPress, head on to the wordpress.org website. So you just need to open your browser and in the URL, you just need to type wordpress.org. And when you press enter, this will open the wordpress.org website and here you can find all the WordPress content. From this website, you can download the WordPress theme, install different plugins and you will also get the documentation. Now, to download the open source WordPress software, I'm going to click on this get WordPress. I'm going to click on this button and when I click on it, you can see you have a next window and on this window, you can see you have a button here, download WordPress 5.3. So to download the WordPress software, you just need to click on this download button and download the zip file of this WordPress software. So I'm going to just click on it and download the WordPress in my local system. Now when you download the WordPress, it will something look like this. So as you can see here, I have here a WordPress zip file. So we need to first extract this file. So I'm going to right click here and say extract here and I'm going to extract this WordPress file. Now, as you can see, I have here a folder WordPress and inside it, I'm going to have different WordPress files. Once we have all these files, you need to just copy these files and place it inside the htdoc folder in your exam server. So you can execute these PHP files. I'm going to just select this WordPress folder and just copy it. And I'm going to place this folder inside htdoc folder. To open the exam server, the simplest way to open it, you just need to open the exam control panel and click on this explorer. When you click on it, you can see you have your exam folder here. You don't need to click on your C drive and then locate your exam folder and open it. Instead, you can just simply use this simple technique, right? Now, in this folder, you can see we have here htdoc folder and in this folder, I'm going to paste my WordPress directory. So I'm going to right click here and say, paste. Once I paste this WordPress in my htdoc folder, I can execute any PHP files. Now, once you place this WordPress folder inside this htdoc, let's start the installation of the WordPress. So using index.php file, you can start the installation of this WordPress software. But before you start it, you need to inform WordPress where you want to store your data, just like your post, pages, and the media files. So if you want to store all this data, inside the MySQL database. So I'm gonna create a MySQL database and inform WordPress where we want to store our data. So I'm gonna just simply open PHP admin. So I'm gonna first open the control panel and click on this admin to open the PHP my admin. So this will open a new tab and here you can see we have here a PHP my admin. By specifying this path in the URL, you can simply open this admin page. Now on this page, you can see on the left side, we have a default database. On the center, right here, you can see we have a database, SQL queries, status, user account, and few settings. And on the right side, we have type of database and the user. Along with that, we have a web server and the PHP version 7.3. If you want, you can increase the size of this font using this setting as well. I'm going to just simply create here a new database to store my WordPress data. So I'm going to simply click on this new button. And when I click on it, you can see I'm going to have here an input text box where I can specify the name of my database. So in this input text box, I'm going to simply say WP themes. So I'm going to specify name to this database WP themes. And I'm going to specify the type of this database. Now, whenever you create a WordPress database, you need to specify the type of it UTF-8 general CI because the PHP always output UTF-8 as a character encoding. That is why we specify here UTF-8 general CI. And to create a database, you just need to click on this create button. So when you click on this create button, you can see I have here a new database, WP themes. And now I want to inform WordPress, I want to store all my data inside this WP themes database. Let's open the WordPress directory and right here, you just need to edit this WP config sample.php. So you just need to open this file in the editor and edit few lines. So I'm going to just open this file in the editor. So I'm going to open this folder 
inside my VS Code editor. So I'm going to right click here and say git bash here. And from the git bash, I'm going to open this folder in the VS Code editor. So I'm going to just say here code dot. So this will open this folder inside my VS Code. So as you can see here, I have this folder in my VS Code editor. And I just want to edit this WP config sample.php file. So I'm going to click on it and open it. And in this file, you just need to edit these lines, these three lines. You need to specify your database name, your username, and the password. So I'm going to simply specify here a database name. I know that what is the name of my database. We just specify the WP themes name to this database. So I'm going to just specify that name to this second parameter right here. So I'm going to just say here WP themes. Make sure the name is exactly the same what you have here inside this phpMyAdmin. Otherwise, you will get an error message. So I'm going to just specify I want to store all my data inside this WP themes database. And now just out of that, you need to specify your username. Now the username of this database is root. So I'm going to just say here root. And I don't have any password here to this root user. You can check the password and this privilege right here. If you click on this privilege, you can see the username list and the passwords. Now, actually, I don't have any password to this root user. So I'm going to get rid of this text. If you want, you can create a password to these users and specify that password in this parameter. But I'm going to leave it as it is. As you can see, the MySQL hostname is localhost and the character set is UTF-8. Now, once you edit these three lines, you don't need to touch anything else. Just save the changes and close this file. You don't need to touch any code now. Just close this file and open your WordPress directory. And now you can start your WordPress installation. Now to start the WordPress installation, you just need to open this index.php file in the browser. Or you can just open this folder in the browser. This will automatically take this index.php file and start the WordPress installation. So I'm going to open a browser. In the new tab, I'm going to just say localhost WordPress. And when I press enter, you can see my WordPress installation is started. And here you need to select your preferred language of WordPress. Your preferred language of WordPress. WordPress is available 116 languages. For this step, I'm using the simple English United States. And when I press continue, this will just bring me to the next window. Just go ahead and click on this let's go. When I click on it, you can see I have this database name. I want to specify a name here which is WP theme and I'm going to specify here a username and username is going to be root. I don't have any password to this database. The database host is localhost and the prefix is WP and I'm going to leave the rest of the input text box as it is. And when I press submit, this will just ask me to run the installation. Now the next window is the welcome window. Here you can fill the information about your WordPress theme. So from this window, you can fill out information about your blog. It contains your site name, your username, password, your email address, and the search engine visibility. So in the site name, I'm going to say WP Daily. Now this site title isn't written on stone. You can change it later as well if you want. Just after that, you need to specify your username for the WordPress login. You need to first login in the WordPress admin and then it will open the WordPress CMS. So I'm going to just simply specify here admin. And in the password, I'm going to say admin at the rate 123. I'm going to just specify a simple password to this username because I'm installing this WordPress in the local system. I'm going to just click on this checkbox to confirm use of weak password. So I'm going to click on this checkbox like this. I'm going to just confirm this password as a weak password. When you're hosting this site, make sure you put a strong password to your blog because this is just a demo site i'm going to specify a simple password to this username now just after that as you can see you need to specify your email address so i'm going to simply specify here example.gmail.com so i'm going to just simply specify a demo email in this email text box make sure you specify your actual email address here when you're hosting your site because if you forget your password of your wordpress login then the email address will help you to recover it because I'm installing this WordPress in the local system, I'm going to just simply say example at the gmail.com. And just after that, as you can see here, we have a search engine 
visibility and i'm going to just click on this checkbox because i'm working on the local host so i don't want to index my blog by default this option isn't selected which lets search engine to index the content of your website and include your site in the search result but at this point i'm working on the local host so i don't want to index this site i'm going to click on this checkbox and i'm going to just click on this button install wordpress when i click on it you can see my wordpress installation is started it will take few minutes to install wordpress in your local system now as you can see the wordpress is successfully installed in your local system so now you can log into your wordpress dashboard so i'm going to just click on this login button to log in with my credential so i'm going to click on this login button and here i'm going to specify my login information so i'm going to first specify my username which is admin and the password is, is going to be admin at the rate one two three when i press login you can see i have wordpress dashboard so as you can see you successfully installed your wordpress in your local system and this dashboard is looking awesome right so this will bring you to the back end of your website so this is what we call a cms where you can manage your site content here you can change your site title your blog content style your wordpress theme and you can do a lot more than that but for now let's visit our website so as you can see when you hover on this wp daily you can see here option visit site so i'm going to click on it and when i click on it you can see i have a default wordpress theme isn't it great it is so this is the default wordpress theme you will get with wordpress if you want you can change it as well now let's move on and open the dashboard again from this dashboard you can change your themes you can add different widgets create a new menu and do a lot more things so in the next lecture we will understand this dashboard of the wordpress so i will see you in the next one